Praise the Lord and Shalom. Before we start with our scripture reflection, let us say a short prayer. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Lord our Father, we thank you for giving your word, your Son Jesus, to give us a direction in our lives. Thank you for all the encounters, all the miracles, and all the parables that are present in the Bible. Lord Jesus, as we reflect on these scriptures, do let us see what you want us to see and understand the way you want us to understand. We make this prayer to Christ our Lord. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us reflect on what Jesus expects from us as followers of Christianity. Each verse in today's scripture reflection has a lot of insight on how to be a better Christian and a true follower of the teachings of Christ. Mark chapter 8 verse 34 says, Then he called the people and the disciples to him and said, If anyone wants to be my follower, they have to forget themselves, take up their cross and follow me. There are times when we are so caught up in our lives, everything we do is for our own benefit and that we do not see the interests of our near and dear ones, let alone outsiders. These selfish gains lead us nowhere because it ultimately leaves us lonely as ever. But when you set aside your own selfish gains, you are a participant, a volunteer in the army of God with a much greater purpose than just finding ways to benefit your own gains and earning money just for yourself. Jesus didn't say, leave everything and follow me. No, he said, forget yourself. Don't be selfish. Take up your cross. My dear brothers and sisters, we are all born with some purpose in life. God has put you here for a reason. Everyone is put in their place here on earth for a reason, for a purpose. And if you do not know yet, what is your purpose? Do not go asking to other people because after all, they are just people. They themselves don't know what they are going to do or maybe not even know their own direction in life. You have to go to your creator, the person who created you. And at the right time, your purpose will be revealed to you. Your cross is your purpose. Just as Jesus fulfilled his purpose, dying for our sins on the cross, dying to take all that pain and suffering away from us, we too have to fulfill our purpose in life. And then we may reap the benefits and the rewards in the kingdom of heaven. Following Jesus is not easy. There will be times when people will make fun of your beliefs. There will be times when people will stop talking to you for what you stand for. But for we as Christians, we must stay firm in our faith. There are many people who may even try to embarrass and even ridicule you for what you believe for your faith in your God. 
especially when what you say is true. And that's why you must not waver from your faith. If you are a person of God who has seen miracles of God's work around you and in your lives. The next verse, verse 35 says, Whoever wants to save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for my sake and the sake of the gospel will save it. Most of us are never contented in life especially as, as youth. We look out for the next party, the next meet with our friends, the next best thing. And this is a perfect way of explaining what this verse means. We are constantly running, running and running towards a goal, towards an achievement, or anything we think that gives us higher meaning or purpose. But everything here, everything earthly is fleeting. The fame, it comes and goes. Money comes and goes. Even family will come and go. But, and there is truly only one constant worth holding on to. And that constant is more sensible. Holding on to that one constant is more sensible than holding on to anything earthly. Because one day or another, in some way or another, if you hold on to these earthly things, you will lose it. Cling on to God. Hold on to your creator who has created you. Because his love his peace, his goodness is unconditional. The next verse, verse 36 says, What good it is to anyone who gains the whole world and loses his own self. Nowadays, many of us are taught to put someone else down and that is the only way one can come up. I remember during my class days, most of the professors, most of them, encouraged this sort of behavior in our environment, encouraged us to be selfish and to put down others. This was how we were being prepared for the real world. And when I would look at motivational videos on YouTube, especially of those that were in my field, the children who succeeded were the ones who were helped and supported by their professors, by their classmates, by their friends. And they did the same. They also, they also helped their friends and classmates. And that's how they succeeded. And it is really, really, really sad to see these days the same evil sentiments of greed, of selfishness, of hurt being taught in our own Catholic households. They say succeed at any cost. But would a person really succeed or gain or would he lose much more? A country gains when people work as a unit, not when people put each other down. And a country's gain results in a better economy, better standard of living resulting into a better life. Even those who are rich, they require to interact with people because we as people live in a community. And if the surrounding is unhappy, the environment also becomes unhappy 
and sad. The same goes for any place of work, any community or institution. So we must ask ourselves, is being rude and cruel to someone, always putting someone down just because you want that promotion? Is that pleasing in the eyes of God? Is hurting your friend just because of your own selfish desires helping anyone? Is cruelly criticizing or insulting someone really helping them grow or making them more bitter and mean human beings? What is so great in the world that you need to lose a part of your soul forever by doing mean things? Do pause and reflect. Mark chapter 9 verse 1 says, And Jesus went on to say, Truly I tell you, there are some of those standing here who will not die before they see the kingdom of God coming with power. Many of Jesus' followers, including his disciples, witnessed a lot of miracles. He healed the blind and the crippled. He touched the hearts of so many people. And even as on date, our living God, our Lord Jesus, touches our hearts and souls. Even the smallest of smallest good deeds done by any person is a glimpse of the kingdom of God. All the miracles of Jesus we see in the Bible and all the miracles of his predecessors are, and the ones we see as on date is the working of the kingdom of heaven, is the working of our Father God who created the heavens and the earth. It is all a glimpse into this kingdom come, into the sanctuary we all crave for. And when we open our eyes to the surroundings, in the midst of all that there is dark, there are rays of hope so bright and so warm it couldn't be mistaken for anything else but the kingdom of heaven. That, my dear friends, is what our Jesus called us to see and spread on this earth until our time to reunite with our Lord Jesus Christ.